In this video, we're now going to turn our attention to exporting from Modo. And once we are done with our work inside of 3D Coat, we will retrieve the model back into Modo. So what I've done is I clicked on the app link icon and tore off a panel to place it here in the viewport. At the top of the panel, if you click on this list menu, you can see the different tasks you might want to perform normally inside of the application. It will put you in the right workspace and have you set up for that particular task. So let's go ahead and start at the top here and I'll just briefly describe some of these. Per pixel painting is the most common painting method. Micro Vertex is more of a legacy option. It's focused on displacement map painting in the depth channel, whereas per pixel painting is normal map painting. However, you do have some displacement map options. You can have displacement shown in the viewport, and you can also export displacement as well as, well as normal maps when working with per pixel painting. PTX painting is more or less an auto UV tool set built in. If all you're going to do is paint in a 3D viewport, then PTX might be the way to go. But if you need at any point to edit the textures in 2D, such as the texture editor in 3D Coat or in Photoshop, then you're out of luck because the polygons in the UV space are not arranged in any visually coherent manner. It's mainly designed to be a 3D viewport painting tool only. Drop as a reference mesh is kind of an old legacy option where it drops it into the paint workspace. There are much fewer options and the performance is not as good as if you dropped a high poly sculpt into the sculpt workspace as a voxel object or surface mode object. Now, dropping as a voxel object, if you have multiple objects, it will come in as a hierarchy. Whereas if you choose a second option, it will compile them all into one layer. Drop as a new merging primitive. This is creating a kit bashing asset that will be stored in the model's palette. The curve profile is very similar, except that it will replicate that model along a path that you may create at some future point. Drop for auto retopology is relatively self-explanatory. Drop retopo mesh as a new layer. This is what we're going to choose for our character model. I'm going to go ahead and step up for a moment and hit F6 to bring up the preset panel. And I'm going to choose this model as kind of our base mesh. All right, I'll close that. So we'll go back to the top here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send a copy of this to the Retopo workspace. And then while I'm in 3D Coat, I can send a copy to the Sculpt workspace as well. At this stage, you would want to do a bit of pre-planning to determine ahead of time, do I want to use this as a base just for sculpting? Do I want to bake it all down to this mesh? Or do I want to auto retopologize after I'm done or manually retopologize? In the Sculpt workspace, if we need to make large-scale edits, such as changing the proportions of a model, or if we need to repose the character, then we have the option to conform the retopo mesh at the same time. Perform UV mapping, it works only on paint objects. And paint objects in 3D Coat are objects that are imported into the paint workspace where you are ready to texture paint. And again, you can modify your UVs, you can create brand new UVs on a paint mesh, whatever the case is. But that's what this option is for. It's going to strictly send it to the UV workspace. Drop as the pen alpha. Let's say you have some models that you want to create brush alphas from inside of 3D Coat. Screws, bolts, nuts, or any other kind of object that you would want to use as a brush so that you can easily apply it to your model it will bring up a panel that will allow you to manipulate the object and place it at the right angle, the right depth, and the right size. Let's proceed now with this option, drop retopo mesh as a new layer. Let's go ahead and push selected items. I'll go into 3D Coat now. As you can see, it automatically placed me in the right workspace, the retopo workspace, but I don't see a model yet, and that's because the scale of the object is quite low here in 3D Coat. So click in the center and drag out to increase the scale. What I'm seeing now is a preview object 
This actually does not exist in the scene yet until I hit the Enter key. The first thing it's going to do is ask if I want to have this mesh snapped to an underlying voxel or surface mesh. In this case, I don't have one, so I will click No. You'll notice the UV preview window here uh, is set up for the eyes. I can go in the upper left-hand corner and choose the other UV map that exists in Modo. Okay, so our UVs came in with it. And if we want, we can manipulate our UVs here as well. Uh, what you would want to do is select one of these options here in the UV section. Again, these are a mirrored set of tools as you have in the UV workspace. This is strictly for paint objects. Yeah, so back in the Retopo workspace, what I would suggest is clicking on the brush icon because if we need to snap locally later on, we already have this tool active and we can also apply hotkeys to our workspaces to make it very quick and efficient getting back and forth between these two workspaces. To do that, I would hover over the workspace and then hit the end key, the E-N-D key on your keyboard and then make the assignment. I have assigned F7 and F8 to these workspaces. What I can do at this point is to smooth a little bit of this roughness out. I can scroll down and click relax. I'll hit my F8 key. I'm now in the scope workspace. There are two different ways that I can bring this model into the scope workspace. One way is to go to the geometry menu. Here with retopo mesh to sculpt mesh, you can assign a hotkey to that. So again, it's just a hotkey away and it instantly brings a copy of that model into this workspace. I also should mention model prep is something you want to also take into account when you are planning to send your model to 3D Coat. As you smooth or subdivide, if you want to maintain certain details, hard surface objects are the same way. Obviously you would want to add supporting edge loops in areas where you want to maintain open edges or hard edges because what I'm seeing now is a smooth model. In other words, just like in any 3D application, it has a smoothing algorithm that makes it look smoother than it actually is. If I turn wireframe on, you can see it will be quite faceted if I convert this to voxels because voxels are volumetric pixels and thus they do not have normals. To illustrate this point, I will create a duplicate copy of this original. And I want to uncheck conformity topple mesh. So with this one visible, I'm going to click here to convert it to voxel mode. 3D code is asking what sort of resolution I want. Right now I'm at 17. It's recommending at least 500,000 to keep the same shape. I'll go ahead and click OK. This throws a lot of new users off because they see something that's smooth become faceted all of a sudden. To try and counteract that, I can click Smooth All many times, but you can see what it's doing is it's really degrading the object, especially where I have very thin portions or appendages. It's also degrading my details. Let's try it again. So to get around that, when you import into the scene, here in the Object section, you click Import, there is an option to subdivide. But you can also just do that once you have it brought into the scene like this. Go to the bottom section of the box tree layer panel, and there is this little icon here for increased resolution. It's the same tool as clicking Res Plus. 